I had a couple of those moments where, you know, I was in law school, I was in corporate finance, I was in commercial real estate on partnership track that I had to dig deep and go to that moment and go to that courage and rip myself out of a path that I never should have been on. Because we all make mistakes, we're human beings. And like, I made plenty of mistakes after my military career. And I was able to continue to course correct because of that pledge that I made until I finally found the right course, which took six years, but I was able to do it. Dory one, this is Fire Team Delta. Dad coming home. Welcome to the Military Veteran Dad Podcast, where it is our mission to bring every dad home. I am your host, Ben Colloy. I'm a United States Marine veteran, husband, and a father. We will bring authentic conversations to inspire action in your life so we can close the gap between the dad you are today and the dad you want to be tomorrow. This is the Military Veteran Dad Podcast. Episode 119. This is Military Veteran Dad. I'm your host, Ben Cloy, and this is your official kickoff to the week. Monday is where you set the tone for the week. It is where you set your intentions. And today, man, do we have a guest that will help you set those intentions with enthusiasm, with probably a lot of hard questions you're going to be left with after this episode, because today's guest is John Lee Dumas. And John Lee Dumas, if you do not know, started Entrepreneurs on Fire way back in 2012, when there were only like 60,000 podcasts in the universe at the time. And now he has built an empire. He is one of the leader in podcasting and entrepreneurship, and he has a thriving seven-figure business that is just making a big, big dent in the world. And the reason why he came on the podcast today is he is now the published author of the Common Path to Uncommon Success. I loved every minute of this book when I was reading it. I just finished it a couple of weeks ago. And I've been following John for pretty much my entire journey. I feel like Entrepreneurs on Fire was like my number three or four podcast that I introduced into my life. And a lot of my journey started because I started listening to his podcast. And within this book lays out a roadmap to exactly how it says, the common path to uncommon success that it's not as hard as you think, but there is a path. It is uncommon, but the success is common on the other end. And the story that we unpacked, it's a 15-minute episode with one story, and this story helped impact this podcast. This story has helped impact my life, and I never knew this story about John till about two to three years ago, and when I heard this story, it moved mountains for me and redefined my language, how I define my life, how I set the intentions of where I want my life to go, and just an incredible story. So without further ado, let's get started with this rapid fire with John Lee Dumas. And if you want to hear my big takeaway of this episode, hang on to the other side. Question that haunts many military veteran dads is why did I come home and my friends didn't? And I know that you shared a story on the stage of Youpreneur probably like three or four years ago. And Chris Ducker replayed that on a podcast where I first heard it. And it changed how I saw legacy and impact forever. And I want to hear how that story for you propelled you to where you are today, because I feel like that story doesn't get enough credit within your autobiography, because to me, that story was really where you made like a complete left turn and started to do things differently. It was a left turn. You know, it was 2003. I was in Iraq as a tank commander in charge of four tanks, 16 men. And it was an intense deployment. You know, we were in Fallujah, Aramadi, Habania, and it was uh, definitely a lot of hot zones. And over the course of that 13-month deployment, I did have four of my soldiers give the ultimate sacrifice. And it happens, you know, not all at once, but like over the course of the 13-month deployment. So it was brutal. I mean, it would have been brutal no matter how it happened, but like that was brutal to have to like stand at four separate caskets that were being shipped home. And I can just remember at every single one of the funerals that we had for these soldiers, I just recommitted to myself that if I didn't make it home, that I was never going to live a life that was less than I was capable of living. And no matter what courage it took to, to take a left turn or a right turn or that, to, to get out of whatever muck I had got myself into, I was going to do that. And, you know, I see a lot of people who haven't experienced that kind of life trauma and haven't made that kind of 
life pledge to, to four fallen soldiers, they just get stuck in what I call the sunk cost fallacy. You know, they, they do a semester of law school. So they have to be a lawyer for life now, even though they hated it from day one, you know, they, you know, went to nursing school. Now they have to be a nurse for the rest of their life, even though they realize they're just now, you know, schlepping bedpans everywhere. And, and they're super unhappy working a 12 hour shift from 9 PM to 9 AM, you know, and for the foreseeable future. And, and they just, have this sunk cost fallacy that like that's how it always has to be. And guess what? There are un- unbelievably happy lawyers. There are unbelievably happy nurses and fill in the blank for every other career path you can have. But there's also a truckload of miserable people out there that are just doing what they're doing every single day because they don't have the courage to say, you know what, today's a new day, today's a fresh day. They don't have the realization that the sunk cost fallacy of whatever they've invested time energy, money. It doesn't matter. What matters is what are you going to do with the rest of your life starting today? And so I had a couple of those moments where, you know, I was in law school, I was in corporate finance, I was in commercial real estate on partnership track that I had to dig deep and go to that moment and go to that courage and rip myself out of a path that I never should have been on. Because we all make mistakes for human beings. And like, I made plenty of mistakes after my military career. And I was able to continue to course correct because of that pledge that I made until I finally found the right course, which took six years, but I was able to do it. Where did that wisdom come from? Because that's not even something many people in the military even have that wisdom to recognize that you came home so that you, like in with for fatherhood, I always say your friend didn't come home so you could come home and be the best dad you can be. But that's not a common knowledge. So where did that wisdom come into you? Because it, was it like an inspiration in that moment? Or was there a commander? Or was there a life event that kind of led up to that moment of they're not coming home, so it's on me to create something worthy of the sacrifice of what they don't get to live? It was an inspiration in the moment, but it did come from just being a voracious reader. And I was always a big time reader of biographies, other of you know military men and women, but also just business men and women as well. And so I read a lot of books, you know, I educated myself, you know, throughout my teens, you know, into my later years still today, I was just reading a fantastic book today about Alexander the Great. So like, I'm always learning and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of wisdom in these books and these biographies and, you know, Marcus Aurelius, you know, is, is a stoic and talks a lot about this stuff as well. And so it was just from the kind of cumulative knowledge of educating myself by reading books, specifically biographies. You were doing things that you didn't necessarily know how it was all going to fit together. And then that one moment, it was like three things. And I love how you mentioned like Alexander Great and the Stoics, because when you read those types of literature, there's two things that I've learned. One, if you want a new idea, always go read something old because we're not working with new ideas. We're just working with old ideas and people forget them. And the second is when you read some of those Stoics, you forget that that's 3000 years ago. And a lot of their language is just like 2021. And they're thinking some of the same things that we are. And that's almost part of the human condition that we forget that we, we think everything is unique, but it's really not. We all have the same problem. And many veterans get in that same like bucket where we're the only ones feeling this way. And we tell us ourselves that lie and we are afraid to, admit that we're on the wrong path, like you had to, like, maybe I'm not the only one like this. And then that's when you kind of started asking better questions and start getting better solutions. And in your book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success is, you mentioned that people often mention your discipline in the military is what led to your success. I think it was this moment is what created this whole, like, the pressure to go out there and ask bigger questions. Because to me, that legacy of what you're creating and what you've created is that life that didn't get to come home. I mean, those soldiers that didn't come home, I mean, that is exactly what you've gone out there and done. And you've created a life, the life that they didn't get to finish. And to me, that is the message that I repeat in my podcast more often than not, because it's just what fathers need to know. And as you, I know you're getting married soon here and you're getting ready to be a family. Like to me, the legacy of this podcast is the legacy of our family. And the biggest thing that I've learned is that we often focus on the legacy of our service and never switch the legacy of our family. Do you have any inspiration as you go forward and getting ready to get married and start a family of how this is going to continue from that original promise? I think one thing that a lot of people do that is something that I catch myself doing from time to time is they time travel. You know, they're always begrudging or, you know, bemoaning the past. 
which I find myself doing. Like I had the best four years of college ever. Like it was just nothing but fun. It was you know, the really the best four years of my life in a lot of ways. And sometimes I just find myself like kind of, you know, getting sad and like, like really missing those days and just being like, man, like those were such amazing days. But what am I doing? Like I'm time traveling in the past. And then a lot of people do it for the future as well. They're just like so stressed about the future. Like how am I going to make the next mortgage payment? How am I going to, you know, get the, the job that I really want? How am I going to overcome this health? You know, it was just like, we have these like time traveling moments where we're either always stressed and worried about the future, or we're always like sad and bemoaning and begrudging the past. But like, not very often are we living in that present moment. And that's something that I continuously try for myself to do is live in that present moment. And that's why, you know, part of my daily routine, you know, keeps me in the present moment with meditating, with journaling. You know, I'm sitting in a sauna for 30 minutes a day. I'm in my cold plunge for three minutes, which makes you pretty present for those three minutes. You know, I, I do about 37 breaths in those three minutes. Every one of them feels like a minute long. So you're kind of present. You realize that, man, three minutes can actually be a really, <laughs> really long time. So, you know, stop time traveling. Next time you catch yourself stressed about the future or just begrudging the past, just say, well, let me look around for a second and let me just be present in the moment. And I'm not saying like never worry about the future because like there's things you do have to worry about and you have to focus on. But at the same time, focus on the present, like be there in the moment. Quote that from Tony Robbins that I've been really trying to re kind of wire some of my life where we're, when we, if you've seen this probably in many entrepreneurs and that get caught up in entrepreneurship, trying to figure it out that we've worked on being human doings and not human beings. Mm. And it's that being part that veterans get hung up on because military is often more focused on doing than being. They don't really care what you be. They just worried about whether we accomplish the mission. And it's that transition into the present of your kids need your being, your business even needs you to be that it's not about all the things you can do. It's like bringing more of the surface. And those, I love what you talked about the morning routine. And there's a reason why you have so many journals because those are the ways to access some of those different inspirations. It was one of the very first things that I connected with you back in 2015 when you were doing your Kickstarter campaign. And those little things can have really big differences. And I like what you talked about with the cold water plunge because I've heard Tony Robbins say like he does that same thing as well, just to tell his head, F you. I'm going to do this, whether you fear it or not every day. And it just kind of gives that reminder that I'm in control, not my, my thoughts. And all of those little things is how we can make big changes as our life goes forward. Yeah. Cause I do not want to do that cold plunge every day. Like the, the way that I was able to get to it was that I just ended up dropping $5,000 to get that puppy shipped out here. And like, now it's in my pool room, right next to my gym every morning. Like I know it's there and I know it's only three minutes and I'm like, am I really going to just waste $5,000 and not utilize this thing that's right there. And so then I do it and it's, it's tough, but yeah, I, I feel like I've only had it for about a week now, but um, I feel also like- it's a brand new habit. We oh, haven't yeah. even fully seen the John Lee Dumas that's going no. to relish from the benefits of a cold water plunge. <laughs> watch out, watch out. <laughs> and it also reminds me of coaching as well, where you almost, when you invest highly in yourself, you're almost making a bet on yourself that you can't waste the investment that you did. And it's not about even some of the times the content or the people it's that bet. And you made a $5,000 bet that this cold water plunge every day is going to help improve your life. And there's no way you're going to waste $5,000 on something you shipped to Puerto Rico. Yeah. And I, and I do this. I kind of say that Tony Robinson. I'm like, you know what? I'm not like, I'm going to show myself who's boss and like, I'm the boss. And like, I don't want to get into that cold, cold tub right now, but like I'm getting into it. And the irony that you have EO Fire as your podcast and you spend three minutes every morning cooling off is probably a good like uh, kick in the pants to the ego of like you are on fire sometimes when you're in your podcast and you're in your groove, but the, here's your reality check. You can still get cold and you can still go back into, you just got to breathe for three minutes in cold water. Breathe, just breathe. And you know, that's on the heels of a 30 minutes infrared sauna, which I've been doing every day for years now. So that's been like a constant part of my routine because I... I find the the sonnet pretty easy to do for 30 minutes. Um, but I did build up to that, I will say. If I really look back to like when I first started, like I could not, you know, do it. But now I've got some things where like I play Settlers of Catan, like it's an app game on your phone, like while I'm in the sauna to kind of like distract myself. And I've got some great YouTube videos playing in the background of some health and wellness that I'm, you know, trying to like learn while I'm, you know, getting getting my sweat on. <laughs> 
Well, I love it. John, I know your time is valuable today, so I really appreciate you stopping by the Military Veteran Dad podcast and dropping some wisdom and that story because legacy is so important. And I like to me, the hero in your journey is that moment where you put your hand on those coffins and said, I will create a life worthy of the gift that you gave me. And every time I see what you're going out to the real world, and I just think about that moment. And I think about, I can still remember I was on I-43 here in Southern Wisconsin when I first heard that story in that keynote. And that moment sparked a whole new thought of things going in my head. So I knew that was the question I wanted to bring here today. So thank you for joining us. Benjamin, that was awesome, brother. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I hope that that episode and that story from John inspired a deeper sense of meaning of what your service meant to you, what everything that has happened in your life, how it can be redefined, and our mindset towards it can change everything. That one story, that one promise kept John asking bigger and better questions of was he living up to that commitment? Did he create a life that was worthy of the life that those soldiers didn't get to have? And that commitment kept asking him to go higher and higher and higher to where he is today. And he's impacting millions of people around the globe with his mission. And to me, that is the big takeaway. That when we think about what we do in our life, when we measure it against the ones that didn't come home, I never served in Iraq or Afghanistan, but I often think about all the dads that didn't come home. And to me, the best way that I can honor the sacrifice that they gave by not coming home and knowing there's a kid out there that never gets to feel his father's love again, the best way that I can do that is to create something that in this particular case of this podcast, it helps other dads come home to create that impact to make sure that we don't let those sacrifices go in vain. And to me, the best way to honor the ones that didn't come home is to be a good dad, to come home, love my family, create the change I want to see in the world and help my kids be that change. And Owning that responsibility is how this story has impacted my life and all the different things, launching my next podcast, The Business of Fatherhood, all of these things have been impacted by the measurement, am I creating an impact that is equal to their sacrifice? And with that, I'm signing off. Have an amazing week. I hope that this week brings you the energy, the courage to go out there, do bigger things. And wherever you are at in your life, whatever you have going on, know you are not alone. I want you to remember that at the core. If you ever need anything, please reach out, ben at militaryveterandad.com. Always happy to talk, always happy to have a conversation and help you get through whatever you're going through. Because just sharing the load, as we talk about so often, can be all what we really need. So with that, I will talk to you guys again on Friday.